Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> ah, good. Okay. Well, welcome to Over 50 Starting Over, everyone. I'm Barry Edwards, and we're here with our special guest, Mark Tennant, our resident AI expert. We have lots to talk about. In that regard, I always learn a lot from him. Uh, thank you for coming, Mark. We've got a great show. Say hi. Oh, yeah, of course, for all the time. You know, you, <laughs> so you just pick up the phone or text me, you know, I'll be here. Yeah, and I really do appreciate that because uh, we had the chemistry going back so long. Uh, in fact, as you like to tell the story, in 1985, we met at Chi Chi's and Mentor. I was three years old. And uh, <laughs> I was you were. Yeah, you were bart uh, bartending. I was waiting tables, and uh, been friends ever since. And yeah. and yeah, and you've had a, a really awesome career, and always along a tech lines and uh, the tech lines and so on. And you do a lot of speaking about AI right now. Hey, you had something exciting happen yesterday afternoon. You want to tell us about that real quick? Um, well, I guess it's fine. I guess I can tell. I haven't haven't gotten back, or we, we just were missing each other, but. Um, a couple of weeks ago, and first of all, hey, everybody, it's great to be here. Hope you're doing well wherever you're at in the world. Um, we, uh, I had, I, I'm all for AI literacy. I guess I can start with the backstory. And as Barry said, um, I speak a lot about it it's around here in Northeast Ohio and a few other places as well. And I'm happy to speak about it at any time because I love this stuff. But um, I was thinking it, uh, AI literacy is kind of a mission of mine. It's all when people uh, and people still have the reading literacy um missions and they're still very very important ai literacy to me is going to be as important as reading Agreed. and i do believe that wholeheartedly yes. especially as we you know and these being early days um you know as as the years go by and the months and years go by it's really really going to be um it, it, it's just going to be crucial that people are ai literate so i reached out to the uh, local congressman that david joyce's office here in the 14th district of the u.s uh, or in ohio i should say and um he uh, and they called me back and I essentially mentioned AI literacy, it being a mission of mine and a passion. Um, and uh, I had one of his staff members call me back. Haven't connected again yet. Uh, maybe she just called to tell me we're not interested, but uh, I don't think that'll be I the doubt case. That. I, I think they'll be uh, pretty in interested in that. And really, I mean, the businesses here in the 14th district and all over Northeast Ohio, very, very important that they jump on this bandwagon before the competition does, especially the competition from overseas. Let's just face it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's bad enough the competition here in the States, let alone, you know, across the globe. So uh, the quicker they come up to speed and get more literate with AI and understand it, understand how to use it and use it properly within their business and in their personal lives, really, mm -hmm. um, they'll be much better off. So hopefully we'll, uh, We'll be able to talk to a few manufacturers and other folks, business folks here in the next uh, coming months and uh, get people up to speed. Yeah, and we're going to just continue with that. I'm going to skip my usual upfront uh, part of the episode where I share a tip or something. Uh, because I'm in a time crunch, uh, Lisa has me at a hard stop at two o'clock. So we're going to just continue with this because you made me think of something. I'm working with a business coach who is like, you really got to niche down into private privatized healthcare. And uh, we had just been talking about it and, uh, you know, niching downs everything. And uh, boy, that makes me think of, um, you know, as long as I've been doing this, I've always been dancing around the healthcare industry and always with the realization that they've always been in the stone age compared to every other industry as far as tech goes. And I would imagine speaking to you here, maybe we have a chance to partner up on some of this kind of stuff with privatized healthcare. I find and I'm speaking to you listeners right now as over 50, as, as this goes, I use AI every day now. And this has just been new to me in 2024. Lisa and I just went to Savannah and uh, Charleston. I planned the whole trip in an hour using AI, uh, the whole itinerary. Nice. You know yeah. this. Yeah. And I did that with our Asheville thing as well. I do it with every. I created a whole new diet for my mother who's got a kidney uh, problem and it needs oh, a special. Oh, and I, 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 I pared it down to uh, a female of 82 years old, uh, with, right down to her potassium level. And it changed and updated the diet with every new uh, wrinkle added to it. So it's super important. I think, Mark, uh, this person getting back to you in uh, local politics, uh, they're probably very much aware that they need to get up to speed and they know nothing. Like they did not know what you were talking about when you inquired. 
Well, these you. early days, they probably, I and mean, people have heard of ChatGPT, I'd imagine by now most people have. And yeah. a lot of the AI you hear about it within the, the, the news media and the mainstream media, as it's called, um, a lot of it's bad that you hear. And, you know, sure, there's those, there's good players and bad players. Hopefully there's more good players than bad. Um, mm -hmm. But we could talk about that if you'd like. But, you know, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very, very crucial. And not only for your business life and your personal life. And I can tell you that um, I saved, I've saved a ton of money using it, just fixing things around the house. Oh, yeah. For example, the dryer quit working, um, the drum quit spinning. And um, so I went to the AI and said, hey, this is the problem. The, uh, the, the dryer doesn't seem to be spinning right. And it said, do this test, do this test, and do this test, and let me know what it is. So it was spinning freely. And I told the AI that, and it was ChatGPT. And it said, well, it sounds like the belt has come loose from the drum. Business. Here is the part number and the kit that you need to get ordered from Amazon. Oh, wow. And when it's you, you get here, come back to me and we'll resume the chat. So I got the part within a day or two and it was very cheap. The parts were like oh, less than $10. Wow. And when I, so I went back to chatty as we call them sometimes, her, him. Um, it, uh, I, I said exactly what it was, took a picture of it, of the model. And it knew exactly the model, Samsung, don't judge me. Um, <laughs> and it knew exactly what it was, knew exactly how to do it. And it told me step by step, screw by screw, yeah. how to take that off, how to remove that drum, how to fix that new belt and how to put everything back together. And it still works. And mm -hmm. that would have been easy, 500 bucks, probably more. Mm -hmm. um, so like I said, incorporating this into your daily lives, making new recipes and coming up with new ideas, uh, health coach, it, it could be a mentor for you in just about any yeah. subject. So it's, it's nothing but goodness uh, from my aspect but I, I do recognize number one the fear number two the bad players and those types of things and the security thing and um did but you see just, those that's balloons? all part of ai literacy i just did <laughs> i don't know <laughs> I, ai does this to us every now and then so some balloons just went up around mark's head for some reason <laughs> all right so to your point also there is an app for chat gpt that you could get and download it onto your phone and yeah. So you might be saying, well, why I just use Google? Well, okay, literally a half hour ago, I was trying to record something on my computer, screen recording. And uh, I have a brand new system. So it's on Sonoma, Mac OS. It's, so it's brand spanking new on this M3 chip. And so I'm not used to some things. I tried to record it using QuickTime player. It's not on here anymore. It's not compatible. So I'm like, how do you do this? I ask, I ask chat is, oh, do a command shift five, hit this icon right here, and then it's going to download and save over to here. I mean, try to find that on Google, and that's going to take you half a day to read through this stuff and find the right thing. So to your point, it's the same. It's so easy, makes everything so easy. And speaking of Google, and you and I had talked about this before, but we hadn't talked about it on the show, um, your new friend, and this is you out there I'm talking to, the person listening right now, uh, your new friend for Google is called perplexity.ai. If you go to perplexity.ai, and for example, yes, you can go to ChatGPT for things what Barry mm -hmm. said, but for um, quick answers and no prompting really involved, they just ask a question kind of a thing. It's like going to Google to ask for information, but there are no ads and it, it, it comes up like this. It cites uh, every resource. So the fact checking ability is there for you, um, but it's perplexity.ai. And I think that's probably... Other than ChatGPT, the second largest growing platform around the world because people are just finding out about it, and it is a heck of a tool. It's great. And I haven't used it yet either. I, I put it in my notes. I am going to bookmark that. Uh, yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you that I have been a subscriber to Chat 4.0 for a few months now, and I find almost every weekday between the hours of about 10 a.m. and 5 p.m., I have a hard time getting connected because it seems that the server's overloaded, which really makes me angry as I'm a premium subscriber. So I have to hit Command R for refresh all the time and keep asking it the same question, and then like the fifth time it'll finally take. For that reason, I've been also using, I have bookmarked Claude. It's, uh, it's a competitor to chat GPT. I use the free version of that and I find it to be just as good. As a matter of fact, I laid out my itinerary for my last trip using both and I copied both and put both in my notes and it was, and they overlapped a lot in recommendations for yeah. what to do. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I really prefer one over the other all that much. I suppose I'm just more familiar with chat 
And uh, so, and with 4.0, I can use Dolly to create images, which I use for my client work. And you know what? I'm going to share one of my uh, client things here. You know, while you're looking, I will say you had mentioned Claude, and I am a premium subscriber to that, as I am a couple other platforms, just because this is what I do, and I have to know these things. Um, But I have found out when you need things written, uh, let's say uh, you're coming up with a maybe marketing materials or maybe research or doing maybe even having AI help you write your book, your autobiography, whatever it is. I have found out Claude is a little bit better at writing, especially technical things. Uh-huh. Um, but they're, I mean, they're close. They're really close. And um, and I encourage folks, even try it with the free versions of ChatGPT and even the free version of Claude, you can do the same thing because you're pretty much on the same level as far as accessibility and and what you're getting for free. Um, mm-hmm. And you'll see the difference in the two. And I think more times than not, you'll maybe agree that uh, uh, Claude's a better writer. But yeah, this, this uh, is it on screen? Can oh, yes, it? I am sharing it. I was hoping that you could see it. So you this do see the header I, image? I saw this when you released this. Oh, okay. And I think it's fantastic. And uh, so, yeah, th- now I did a lot of Photoshopping, but I did not create these three main characters. For those of you that are listening, which I know it's most of you, I uh, prompted into ChatGPT, uh, technically Dolly. Uh, I said I want a, a heroic look and ins- inspirational looking um Three electricians that uh, that's it's inspiring. They look very competent. They're wearing uh, hard hats and 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 all of that. And it took me a lot of different versions. Um, probably I probably went through fifteen versions before I came up with this one. And I was like, yeah, that's the one. Now I also it's just the brand I created. I I like to use my with my images a blue cast, orange and yellow cast. And so with all my blog articles, I create these images with the, the cast as well. And um, that's funny. I, in these two, these are actual photos. Those I'm usually using Dolly drawings, but uh, my latest ones, I used regular photos. So mm-hmm. let's uh, let's get out of there for the moment. Beautiful. I mean, that was just, you know, it's that's the perfect example because you didn't get it on the first time, not even the second or the third, but you tried. And it took a little bit of time. But for you to design something like that by hand, and and Barry, you're I mean, you're one of the best graphic designers I've ever met. Ah, thank you. How long would that take you manually to do, as opposed to writing fifty, you know, uh, fifteen days. versions one prompt? <laughs> yeah, days rather than a couple hours. It literally yeah. took me a couple hours, so it would have taken me days. And it's it's really a fantastic image that took this brand to a whole nother level. And yeah. um, you know, what else can I say about that? So. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I wanted to ask you for the viewer's sake, the difference between chat 3.5, which is the free version. I suggest everybody start with that. Then there's chat four, the premium version, which you and I are both signed up for. It's $20 a month. There's no contract. And then there's this new thing, chat four zero, or is it four O? What is that? Um, it's just another model. Um, it's their improved model. You know, it's between Opus and, and the O's with these, uh, different platforms. We'll just call it O. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chat four O. Um, and it, it. So the difference. So the difference between the premium and the free. It number one is computing power. You. It'll take longer for your prompts to go through. Your data and information you get is not as robust as it is now. Three point five was the first version that came out in November of twenty twenty two. So it was released in twenty twenty two. You know they probably had it ready in twenty one. So you're looking at technology that's three years old right now. Right. And, and it even, has not been fed information since then, since twenty one. Well, well it's it, I, I mean, heard. I think I think right before twenty November of twenty twenty one and then right after that, um it might have when they were developing four uh, version four, that it got maybe a little bit of an upgrade. But when these models are made, it's not like when you get an update to any kind of program, like a Word or you know PowerPoint, let's just say, or anything, when you say, hey, there's a new version of this available, do you want to download it? Everybody has seen that before, I'm sure, with, with something. Hmm. Well, with these models, that's not how it's done. They just don't take this model and upgrade it. They actually have to start from ground zero with each new model. And that's the reason for the development, because they take the lessons learned and then the computing power is much better. And then they're just better at what they do, these engineers. Mm -hmm. And that's how they're able to create these new models and why it takes so long for these versions to come out. Because once it gives them what they want, then they have to make sure the safeguards are in place. 
and um, and those types of things. So um, it's it's not it's not where it's uh, they're just upgrading something from one version to the next. It's a whole whole new infrastructure and everything. So the difference between the two, and you had mentioned it with four, you get um, and four oh now of course you get the Dolly and you get the image generator with four oh it's really nice. And I have my phone here. Mm -hmm. And have you signed up for the voice? Have you, are you, have you been talking to the voice on ChatGPT? No, no. You, you know what? To be perfectly honest, I downloaded that app and forgot about it. I uh, I oh. use it on my desktop all the time. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if I ever used it on my phone yet. Well, let's see here. So this is it. Cool. Hey, ChatGPT. Hey, Chat What's up? <laughs> well, I'm actually live on a podcast right now, and so are you. That's well. Awesome. What are we talking about today on the podcast? Well, we're talking about you, ChatGPT, and we're also talking about the differences between the 3.5 model and the current model. Um, can you go over the differences between those two? Sure. The key differences between the GPT 3.5 model and the newer models like GPT-4, which is what I'm based on, include improvements in understanding context, handling more complex queries, and providing more accurate and coherent responses. The GPT-4 model has a larger training data set, which means it has learned from more diverse and recent information. It's also better at understanding nuances in language, making it more reliable for detailed and specific tasks. The kernel you mentioned might refer to the underlying algorithms and architectures that have been optimized in GPT-4 to enhance its performance. Okay. These optimizations result in faster processing time Chat GPT, and thank more efficient use of computational resources. Chat GPT, in thank summary, GPT-4 <laughs> is more advanced in terms of data, understanding, Let and efficiency compared to GPT-3.5, <laughs> leading to better overall performance. Oh my God. Uh, that's right. And I really appreciate that. Say hello to everybody in the podcast audience. And we're going to go back to uh, speaking here, but go ahead and say goodbye and say hello. Hello to everyone listening to the podcast. Thanks for having me on. Goodbye and have a great day. Dude, that's so cool. That is so cool. So, I mean, and and that that's the voice. That's the sky voice, by the way, that sounds like somebody pretty familiar. That's the Scarlett O'Hare Um Oh. Uh, Scarlett O'Hare, no, uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> I'm oh, well, that's do you know how profound that is? She did that movie. She was the voice in that movie, Her. And right. it was a story, it was about Siri in the future. Guy falls in love with Siri, AI. And spoiler alert, uh, at the end, he is completely brokenhearted when he realizes she has an affair with everybody in the freaking world. <laughs> you know? Uh, it's a it, it's crazy. But what happens is she's actually in the middle of some litigation with OpenAI because uh, they actually came to her last May and said, hey, could we use your voice? And it was similar to what she did in her. And um, she said no. So what oh. they did is they went out and hired an actress who sounds a lot like her. Well, I didn't think that sounded that like sound. her. And um, pardon? I didn't think that sounded like her. Well, it, it's close. A lot of people mm. say it's close and she says it's close, but Supposedly they had paused it and my version of the app still has it. I think if I probably download the latest version of the app, mm -hmm. again, it's not the model, the app. Um, it, I don't think Sky, which is the name of that voice, is uh, I don't think it's on there. So, well, um, yeah, so that's just kind of some of the some of the uh, maybe identity things that people think of. Identity. Hey, can steal my voice and steal my identity. Can it do that? Oh, so, yeah. You know, Bruce Willis uh, sold off his likeness to AI or to somebody that uh, they could use it to make movies of him in his prime in the future or long after he's gone. Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, interesting. Yes. And I noticed about that voice, what I was thinking, first of all, a very pleasant voice. I did not hear Scarlett Johansson myself, but I, I noticed it was very racially ambiguous, which mm. of course they're going to try to do. It was like, it almost sounded like a black girl's voice, but not quite, you know, that yeah. kind of thing, which is uh, one of the things too, you're talking about when they're programming it, the difference. And I was going to say, yeah, but they also have to program their political bias into it too. And they take a lot of time to do it. I have challenged it uh, upside down and sideways to try to make it trip up on itself. Uh, boy, it's uh, it's got some pretty uh, hard wired uh, biases in there. Don't you well, think? Well, I think a lot of it, well, I, I, I'm not, I haven't played with it that much. Like I have Google where I know Google definitely is suppressing oh some God. things. 
Um, oh my, that's but, an but, understatement. Man. But I think I think more than anything else, right now, when you ask it anything politically or anything like that, the guardrails they've actually put in guardrails where this is they, they don't want this mis information spreading as it were and especially yeah. this being an election year here in the united states uh -huh. yeah and they're very mindful of that um sure they're big tech and we know of course who big tech a lot of times is in bed with those types oh, of yeah. things but when i when i think if you just step back um and when they were developing this that was one of their um this model one of their huge things was to put guardrails with the coming elections and for the future to not be able to generate misinformation through their platform and they just didn't want to be you know, they didn't want to be known for something like that. So I, I guess I'm kind of in the middle, but I, I, I like mm -hmm. to lean on the safe side as as than the conspiracy side in this case. No, no, for sure. Okay, let's tie a few things together. Lisa had a question for me yesterday that uh, I did not have an answer for. We are talking about Siri. Siri is Apple's AI, so to speak. It's a little outdated. I, do, I never use Siri because I find it unreliable. Um, and anyways, Apple just signed some kind of a deal with OpenAI. OpenAI is the company that produces ChatGPT. That's right. What, what can you tell us about that? Well, I can tell you that um, last Monday at the Apple Development uh, Developers Conference in California, they had, um, this was just this past, was it this past Monday or the week, week ago Monday? Oh my gosh, I'm so lost. No, I I do. It, was, it was this, this past Monday. Monday. Yeah, yep. yeah. And um, so they entered into an agreement with them um, to have ChatGPT um, as part of the um, iOS systems and those types of things. Um, and, I, I, you know, I, I only got to see pieces of it. There's a lot of people that said there wasn't really anything earth shattering, maybe that we didn't know. I think it was leaked that they were going to have some kind of a deal with uh, Apple. But, you know, Apple's, I would imagine, because they have so much data as well. I'd imagine the agreement um, is beneficial for both parties because I'm sure there's some sharing going on. Mm. I would say from the from the uh, OpenAI chat GPT standpoint that that's, they welcome that data. That's data that they have permission to use as opposed to, well, maybe when these models were first created, they were trained on data they shouldn't have been trained on. Uh, and when I say that, I mean copyrighted data, intellectual property, those types of things. Right. Um, and then from Apple's side, they just don't have to spend as much development, I would think. Um, to bring that type of technology to their products, even though Apple's got more money than you or I. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> um, so I think for both parties, it was more of a, you know, data for the open AI folks and then the use of the platform for the uh, for the Apple folks, I think was probably the, you know, the, the thing that really is beneficial for both companies. And, um, and, and I know just look for it to be you know, all across Apple products. I'm sure Siri is going to be powered. The voice, I'm sure, won't change, but um, I'm sure Siri is going to be powered with um, ChatGPT, OpenAI, mm -hmm. uh, some form of it um, with maybe Apple's twist on it. But uh, we'll see in the coming months. I think with the new iPhone, when, when does that usually happen? Right before Christmas usually, right? That makes sense, I, but I don't know. Um, as I think about it, uh, enhancing Siri with ChatGPT Something like 85% of all uh, smartphones are iPhones. I, I really think that's the, or maybe that's with young people. I know that's with young, young people are all about, you got to have an, a, uh, an iPhone. I know and I if, do. <laughs> yeah, same here. So imagine everybody now right here talks to uh, chat GPT like, like it's nothing. Instead of going to your computer, going to your app, and instead of a, a very limited Siri, you now have artificial intelligence right at your fingertips at all times now. That's what it's going to be. It's going totally mainstream. Yep. Uh, this is what I'm seeing. When, when ChatGPT couples with Apple, the world changes for sure. I mean, I'm only just putting this together right now in my head. Well, I mean, I, 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 I think you're, I think you're right on. And yeah. you know, when you say at your fingertips and and things like that, it's it's. I just had a discussion online at work today with uh with some folks where we were talking i work for a major medical manufacturing company and um the you know we're working we have some ai into a lot of our products especially in the radiology products and those types of things imaging and you know they're they're touting the all the what's to come what they're doing now how much better um diagnosis and patient care is which is what we're all about is safety and patient care for sure but my point was if 
you can roll. I, I said, you can hullabaloo all this stuff you want. This, this, this great thing, the next great thing. But if people aren't literate in artificial intelligence, if there is no AI literacy involved, no skill teaching, no training or anything, and what good is any of this stuff? Mm -hmm. And I can tell you here in Northeast Ohio, there is little to none of that going on at the grassroots level. I mean, with the yeah. primary care folks that just meet, you know, see patients day after day after day, this could help them in many ways, not just for diagnoses, but, you know, for uh, uh, you know, in the Microsoft Office products that they use across that with their automating their schedules. I mean, everything. Sure. I mean, everything. their patient schedule, just everything can improve, but they don't have, they don't know where to start. They don't yes. know where to go. And, um, you know, AI, that's why AI literacy is so important and you can have all this great stuff, but if nobody knows how to use it, what good is it? Well, so I'll tell you what, Mark, again, I'm taking on my feet as we're talking. I walk around with these earbuds in my ear at all times. And because I'm listening to podcasts, I'm talking on the phone. In other words, I'm wired up to my phone all the time, <laughs> hands-free. Yeah. My, here's my point. We are so close to being symbiotic with AI now. Now that chat AI is going into Siri and I'm going to have this in my ear at all times, I am almost wired up with AI it, it, in my brain right now. Yeah. So just uh, just your opinion. How close do you think we are at uh, time frame from AGI, artificial general intelligence? In other words, consciousness of AI. Well, how first of people don't know what that really is. Our That's AG, why I tried AGI. To. Um, we yeah. can it, it, the simple thing is it it can date it can I don't want to say replace the human in many ways it can. Let's just I always like to use the trip example. Right now, as Barry said, you can go to any of these platforms. You could tell it what you want to see, what you don't want to see, um, what you like, what you don't like, those types of things. Add it into a prompt, and most more times than not, it'll give you a custom itinerary yeah. for your trip. Beautiful. Well, to take that a step further, now with AGI from the planning point. Just, just tell the AI exactly what you want and where you want to go and how much you want to spend. It will do the rest. It will not do your itinerary. It will book your hotel. It will book your flights. It'll get your rental car from start to finish A to Z. That is the best idea that, from a layman's term that I could explain to people who would understand what AGI is. So to Barry's question, how close are we to that? Some people say as close as five years. Oh, Sam, all the CEO of OpenAI won't guess, but this is what he says about that. These models that we're using now are the least capable models. In other words, the dumbest AI you will ever know. Yes. So they're, and it, think of that. <laughs> oh, I know because they seem genius to me. They know everything. Right. So, but just when it takes it to that mm -hmm. um, and then everything in between um, and we can, you know, talk about this for hours, but just from a layman standpoint and the, 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 that's probably the best definition I could give anybody of AGI and how it would actually work, um, that would take the human out of that piece of it. Um, hmm. uh, and, and there's a lot of jobs and a lot of jobs people don't want to do. And especially maybe right. from an administrative standpoint and those types of things that, um, it can do a lot of those things now. Well, just think how much better it's going to be in, in the coming years. And I, I don't have a guess. I mean, I, you know, I'm going to be, uh, you know, anywhere between seven to 10 years, probably. But the way things are going so fast and these models are learning so fast, it's 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 hard to tell. And the, and I know that I've heard Sam Altman say this again, the CEO of OpenAI. He has said it's amazing because the more information they give these models, the smarter they get. I mean, they uh -huh. just crave this information. So um, or when I say crave, I mean, they just work with more information, just do it so much better, the more they're given. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if it was five years um, it's for the less. simplest things, but maybe 10 years for maybe something more complicated. I don't know. Less. But that would be my guess, five, 10, seven to 10. See, the thing is, is that it, um, it evolves at an exponential rate. And I don't think people understand what exponential really means. So <laughs> I'm serious. Case. As as it starts to replicate itself, a smarter version of itself, it's going to start doing that like in, in hours to minutes to seconds. I yeah. don't know how we don't create a, a whole God here very soon. 
I, I, and nobody knows where it's going, dude. I listen to podcasts with Sa Sam Altman, Elon Musk. Uh, uh, what's his name uh, from Facebook? Um, Zuck Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Nobody has an answer. And then, you know, the, the best answer I got was from Elon Musk saying, we need to pause this for six months till we figure out, oh, yeah, China's going to love that because they're going to put the pedal to the metal. Whoever wins the technology war wins everything. I mean, it's the high. Well, you, 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 you definitely, you know, and that's the thing of, um, and with this technology thing, I mean, with the U S companies going over there and the sweetheart deals that the chai comms and let's just face it, that's what they are, yeah. uh, are giving them. Yeah. They slowly and slowly, once they get in, they slow, slowly and slowly squeeze them and squeeze them for that information. And yes. I mean, how do you think, how do you think their supposed electric cars are better now? Well, they stole the information from us. Yeah, well, <laughs> the, yeah, it's like, things. Elon, come on, bring over your uh, stuff over here for cheap manufacturing, and they steal all the technology. They're known for doing that all the time. Oh, with all that's the, all they do. That's yeah. they, wouldn't be, they wouldn't be where they are if they didn't steal any of this right. stuff. I mean, right. they're very aggressive, and you're exactly right. I mean, you know, from the technology side, from the uh, economy side, boy, you, you, you master those two things, mm. man. Right. Um, you know, you, you're going to be hard to stop. But, uh, you know, just that aside with the uh, with the technology. And yes, it definitely have to keep this. This is why, you know, open AI is not in China and it's not taking money from from. Thank investors God, huh? The area. I mean, it's it's you know, it's they 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 want to keep this technology here and keep it here. Yeah. Um, it's OK if it's rolled out and people use it. Yes which they don't allow them in China to use. Mm. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I'm sure there's virtual private networks going out to the United States oh, and yeah. people are using it, of course. But, oh, yeah. um, you know, it's just you, you we, we have to win this battle. We have to be, remain the leaders and at the forefront yeah. of all of this for sure. Well, I'm going to segue into some uh, politics here I, because I do, uh, you know, you, you talk to some political officials here locally, they're interested in AI. And uh, as the more... In, the more well-versed I get with politics, which I'm not, but Merle makes me very curious. And he and I challenge each other with different podcasts that are revealing to uh, COVID was an eye-opener. for Merle's me. good at that. <laughs> yeah. And it was an eye-opener for me and a lot of people like me who trusted our government were like, hey, let's be patriotic and do what they say and all that, only to realize that it was a major power grab. And, uh, we did everything wrong. Our government tried to go pure authoritarian, and it was an eye opener to me and a lot of other people of just how corrupt our entire government is. Well, so uh, on the bright side of things, a lot of people have gone independent. So a lot of people do not trust mainstream media anymore, and my God, they nobody should. Um, and so people like Tucker Carlson and, and Phil McGraw, Dr. Phil McGraw have gone independent. Um, I'm uh, Merle and I are big fans of Dave Smith. He's a very popular comedian and libertarian head of the libertarian party for the most part. And um, James Lindsay, do you know James Lindsay? He's I know. brilliant. He's an author. He's got a great podcast called new discourses and it's heavy. Like, wow. It's how you would love it. Uh, mm. And it's really, it's all about fighting the, the woke in Chinese invasion is basically what it is. He unveils about the different nefarious powers that like the UN and the kind of manipulation they're doing as a power grab as a and worldwide we, we, power. We're grab. the, we're the head, head, head we're, bank of the, UN. we are in everybody's bullseye. Everyone, <laughs> China, Russia, UN, there's all these, the deep state, they're all trying to topple the dollar and take seize the government control of the government. I mean, look at Biden. He's a figurehead. We've been run by the deep state. It's it's unveiled itself, especially since COVID. You got Fauci complicit with the FDA. FDA is complicit with the pharmaceutical industry. And you know the whole story. All right. So uh, on Tucker Carlson a few days ago, he interviewed uh, Thomas Massey. He's a congressman for, from Kentucky. It's a fascinating interview. I will play a couple minutes of it. I'm going to hit the highlights, but he's a very libertarian leaning Republican. And what does that mean, libertarian? Well, from my point of view, what I like about it, and I will never identify with a party or anything, uh, but I find myself agreeing with 
basic libertarian philosophies, and that is don't fund wars, stay out of wars, prevent wars, stop wars, and uh, take care of the United States. And um, so this is where Massey is. And um, he he opposed funding uh, for um, Israel. It's in my notes here somewhere. Funding for Israel. Here it is. Massey voted against foreign funding for Israel more than 15 times in April alone. He said during that time, there were like four things on the ballot for the United States uh, budget, like the border. Four things, but there are 15 for Israel. Uh, he says most, of, and, and in fact, our funding for Ukraine, most of that funding goes to funding the pensions of their ex-military officials. Then he goes on to how, tell how, us. How does, how does he know that? Oh, God, I don't listen to the podcast. He'll tell you all that stuff. I just okay. took quick notes and okay. I, I will play a little bit, but because I wanted to just hit some highlights, I want people to be aware Never heard of this, did not know this till he goes in a great deal about this organization called APAC. That is A-I-P-A-C, and it stands for American Israeli Public Affairs Committee. It's, it's a political it's action committee. A political action committee for Israel. Okay. And uh, it is Israeli lobbyists. There is the simplest definition that you can. And he all, says, all PACs are lobbyists, but yeah. Yeah, well, this is the only country that has a, a lobby committee. Oh, I don't think so, but okay. That's what he said. <laughs> well, uh, he said Britain doesn't have it. Russia doesn't have Putin doesn't well, why have does one. Why does Britain China? need one? And Russia, everybody knows what they're about. China doesn't have one. Well, but, Israeli you know. has one. And he says that every republic, he says, I don't know about Democrats, but every single Republican has, as they call it, their APAC guy. And, and they will help fund their campaigns. And most people feel that if they do not uh, play nicely with APAC, they're not going to get reelected, which is basically once they get elected, that's most of their job thereafter, trying to get reelected. Well, and, I mean, there's, and and there's political action committees from every industry yep. across oh, yeah. the board. It's Everybody, a big problem. Everybody's, and if they just did away with political action committees, you wouldn't yes. have any of them. I but. totally agree with you. I totally agree <laughs> with you. I, in my opinion, I think that every government official should be paid like two hundred and fifty thousand a year and be monitored as to what their lifestyle is. Because if it and and meaning there can be no other funny games with money. You're getting paid very well, and you're a public servant. So now start acting like one and take money well, out of politics altogether from there. Well, I understand, but people do invest. Um, well, sure. They earn. Yeah. But if you yeah. but if you all the if you go into politics, make one hundred and seventy five a year and all of a sudden you're a multimillionaire, I think you got some uh, some questions that need to be answered. Uh, yeah, that's, and and that's, that's common insider. But a lot of a lot of though, a lot of people consult. Yeah, and I will say this, a lot of congressmen, are, you know, are attorneys and different things like that. So um, I don't know what the rules are for those kinds of things, mm -hmm. but I would imagine in some way, shape or form that if there's a chance to make a little extra money, then they're they're going to do it. But I get what you're saying. These political action committees are probably sticking the money in the pockets of these politicians yes. and they, they want to they want them in their back pocket. I, I totally get not that. only that he but says every but every pack is just not this particular yes. one. Every single political this one's pretty bad. And he says uh, basically <laughs> every uh, one of these government officials have taken their free trip to Israel on APAC, in, in which case it's presented and uh, make uh, Israel very uh, uh, compassionate, bring out your compassion. And so you vote for Israeli things. And he says he's never he's like the only one that's uh, not taking that yet. He goes, anyone that hasn't hasn't gotten around to it yet, but they're all doing it. They are all as they're up and coming and running for office. They are introduced at APEC at that level and uh, are encouraged to write. He says they have to write a term paper. And he says to APEC, I'm not writing a term paper for you. Everybody else does because the theory is you get them to do that while they're running. And in return, they show their support and help you get elected. And but if you do that little favor on the on the down low there, once you are elected, you're more apt to do other favors. This is their methodology. So uh, it was a big eye opener for me. And um, he said, in spite of APAC running hundreds of thousands of dollars of ads opposing him, meaning Massey, Massey still won 70, 76% of the vote in his last election. Uh, 
So he's very well liked in Kentucky. I'm going to give you just a bit of background about him because uh, I found him so impressive. And in the interview with Carlson, they didn't do this until the end. I I wish kind of wish they would have led with it. But he grew up in very, very rural Kentucky. He said he he was a nerd. They had nothing to do out there. So he took things apart and put them back together. And he soon uh, he became a, a, like a robotic engineer at a very young age. He was winning science fairs at age 15 and then got accepted into MIT. And it, she, it was a mind blower for him. He's never been outside of Kentucky. Next thing you know, he's in was it Massachusetts, I think it is. And um, a whole new world opened up to him. And he built a, a, a VR, virtual reality reality device that allows you to touch 3D objects. He's got patent on that and a few other things. And so he, he started this company. And I forget how he made this weird turn into politics. It was kind of like a very sudden thing. And and uh, I'm sure there were a lot of people in his district saying, hey, you know, you should run for Congress. <laughs> yeah. All like thirteen hundred you know? of them. Yeah. I mean, it's a very, uh, very small. T- well, it's not a small town. It's uh, on a lot of land, small population. But he said so in between after he sold his company, I think after he sold his company, before he got into politics, he built his own house in Kentucky in the holler. He owns over fifteen hundred acres. Imagine fifteen hundred yeah. acres, my God! And uh, it's so, probably three dollars an acre in that part. Of right, right. And so he's in northern Kentucky and along the Ohio, Ohio border. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. And uh, super rural. And uh, he built his own house. He's got a sawmill on his property. He planed all the boards from all his own trees and built his own house. And the rock floor is all from rock from the uh, creek, as he calls it, the creek. Um, and so he did this all himself. They lived in a, a double wide trailer for two years. Uh, he, his wife and his four kids, while he built this thing, it was like his day job for two years. That's, that's what he did. So then mm-hmm. somehow he finds his way into politics. And uh, my point being, he's a man of very strong character. He will not take any funding uh, from people like this APAC. Uh, these APAC. But how people. does he get funded for his elections? I right? I, I would suppose that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he just can't, you know, unless he's got money. <laughs> well, just, I think he does. Even to spend that type of money. I, I think they say that even for a congressman, uh, I, I've heard this before where, you know, it's a minimum of a few hundred thousand dollars to, uh, and this is probably in the smallest oh, area. Sure. Just think if you're in New York or California or any other bigger states. Um, but it, it takes a good bit of money. I'd be interested to know where he does get his funding. That's from. a good question. It's my guess is private funding. I don't know if he addressed that or not. Um, mm-hmm. and basically, what I'm trying to do is give you uh, guys enough tidbits to uh, get you thirsty to watch his interview because it's riveting yeah. and you're going to learn a lot about our government from it. Mm-hmm. Here's here's one that's interesting. So in 2020, Massey drove eight hours to D.C. to oppose a two point two trillion dollar two point two trillion dollar covid emergency aid package, which. All the Congress was told, hey, it's too dangerous out there. It's COVID, you know, COVID's everywhere. So don't come in and we'll just, you know, pass this on through. I think it's called a, you need a quorum, meaning no opposition. And it, 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 like an emergency thing could get passed through. Well, no, I think quorum is just you have enough enough people to vote. Okay. You don't have everybody I, there, but you've got enough was, to vote. The way yeah. he said it was like, oh, that's a word I, that I need to get familiar with. That it, it sounds whatever. Um, but he so he said, oh, my God, I'm driving there uh, to make sure that I oppose this thing. And he said 430 plus people of Congress all hated him for it. So he opposed it several times. <clears throat> I got to share a clip with you. Um, he, he talks about his relationship with Trump here as as a result, and um, I got to make sure I share sound. And he does a Trump impression, too. So I'll share about a minute of this. So if you do you see the screen with. Um, I do. OK, so yeah. this is Tucker Carlson dot com. Tucker show Thomas Massey. You could Google that and find it. And it's really nicely laid out here. So you could go to wherever you want. I'm going to go to this with Trump right here. Let me know if it's too loud, Mark. Or Democrats left. I've noticed. But they realized this was a chance. That's to so, make a statement. Know. So they put a bill on the floor saying Trump, you okay. can't go to war with Iran without a vote of Congress. 
which is constitutionally obvious. So I had to vote for it, but I was only one of three Republicans to do it. So he remembered that time, but he didn't remember the fake Obamacare repeal and some of the other things that oh, uh, I, th I was kind of, uh, you know, the turd in the punch bowl on. I got to back did up, I think. change your views at all? No. Uh, the, the president tweeted that I was a third rate grandstander and that <laughs> like, this is before I got back to my seat. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I go back from the speaker's lobby to go to my seat to get ready to make the motion. And uh, one of the Congress was like, you better look at your phone, Massey. Look at your Twitter. And I turn it on. He's like tweeting hard and heavy against me. He said I should be thrown out of the party. And then he, the best one is I'm chairman of the Second Amendment Caucus. So his third tweet was, he's terrible on guns. <laughs> I was like, what? Where did that come from? <laughs> Have you seen my Christmas card picture? <laughs> right. What's your Christmas card picture? Oh, uh, well, it's a little infamous. <laughs> no, I, I've actually his Christmas seen it, card pic picture is uh, his family holding some guns and he took it uh, privately. And then he got I had a few margaritas and he tweeted it out and it became infamous. <laughs> but I accidentally went beyond where I wanted to go. Let's see if I'm in the right place here. If not, there, I had maybe 10 friends <laughs> who were like looking at me like that guy is dead. Like I, we've never seen Harry Carey like this. <laughs> They were worried for me, but the rest of them hated me there. They would come up to me and say, I, I live with my mother. And when I go back home, you're going to cause me to take COVID to her and she's going to die. And I'm blaming you for this. And I said, so that's your face. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, like, no, it wasn't just one. It was like when he was done, there was a line of people. <laughs> I was like stood there and they're all coming to hate on me. And um, I was like, but what about the guy that's going to the grocery store and bagging your groceries and carrying them out to the car? Does he live with his mother, too? Like, what about the trucker who's out there driving and interacting with people in order to get the goods to where you need to be? What about the nurse who's going to work every single day? What about the Black Lives Matter protesters that were allowed to do that? And you couldn't even go to church. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, there was a, all yeah, that. He's, he's great. I'd love to hear it. Yeah. He's oh, great. Yeah, I really want you to ch uh, check this out. I'm just going to uh, uh, one last thing that I want to uh, show here and talk about is uh, what's his name? Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson. Right. Uh, he talks about hey, what a sellout this guy is. I'm going to try to see what we got right here. And I'll just play him. That your speaker, the Republican Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, is working for the Democrats. Yeah. There it's you that go. simple. I mean, and, and that's. One of the reasons we went through with the motion to vacate, uh, Paul Gosar and I co-sponsored Marjorie's motion to vacate. There were ultimately 11 of us who voted for it. Motion to vacate would be to fire him. I bet to Matt Gates Speaker likes Johnson. this guy. Matt Gates is awesome, except I bet, that... I, I, I bet he likes Thomas Massey. <laughs> I, I bet he's like, yeah, one of the few. Because basically yeah. what I got out of this whole interview is how he talks about the Uniparty, which a lot, is a term that I keep hearing more and more of people in the know. And that is the Republicans, I call them the appeasement party that uh, basically like Matt Gates, they'll let him get up there and throw some serious shade on somebody. And it looks like, Oh, now everything's exposed. Prosecute those people. Nothing ever happens though. So right. you feel appeased for a moment, you know, mean tweets go out and uh, that's it. But I mean, I, I want everybody to listen to this and, and li literally put it on your phone with your earbuds in. That's how I did it. I didn't watch it. And <laughs> yeah. I listened to it twice. It was riveting. He's yeah. so entertaining. He does a, a great Mitch McConnell impression. If you know that guy's <laughs> voice. And he's oh, from it's, Kentucky. He's it's one dead of the on. from Kentucky. Yeah. Dead on. It's a <laughs> riveting interview. So uh, right. that's really all I wanted to say about that. Okay. And and frankly, I hate to say it, Mark, I, I got to start winding up because Lisa's got. Yep. I, I was just looking. I was like, so we got about three and four minutes. Yeah. And uh, uh, we got a couple people that a couple that's coming over for happy hour uh, this afternoon. And that's going to be a lot of fun. So I got to help set up for that. OK. Yeah. Beautiful good. day. You got anything good going on for the weekend? Well, I know what I'm not doing this afternoon. What is that? I'm not coming to your house. <laughs> You're uh, not invited. I, I'm not, well, that's just fine. No, uh, this time, but I would love to have you and Tammy. Oh, over I know. I know. That I would be fun. Yeah. Um, uh, well, this weekend, Father's Day. So I'm going to be oh, spending fine. Sunday at my son's house. He has a nice pool with my granddaughter and my grandson. Oh, nice. And I'm um, going to grill out and have a couple adult beverages, as they say, and just enjoy the weather and enjoy my family. Uh, in about uh, 30 minutes, I'm going to go hit some golf balls. And, uh, nice. Oh, and it's a beautiful the weather. Day. So, yeah. Yeah. That's about, yeah. That's, 
I don't know. You mentioned Father's Day, and it made me think last year, Lisa gave me the nicest card because I'm such a great dad to Charlie. To Charlie, our, our yeah, dog. Charlie's dad. <laughs> yeah, and he really is very appreciative. So uh, outside of this happy hour, I hadn't thought about it a whole lot. I do hope we have great weather. Uh, yeah. I think it was Lisa told me that it's supposed to be really hot next week. Yay. Uh, I'm not looking forward to that. I, I love this weather. It's the best time of year. May and June, awesome. Love it. Well, to me, I complain too much about winter, and I can't have it both ways, so the hotter the better. <laughs> yeah, okay, I hear you. With that, I want to thank you once again, because I Thanks, love our conversations about AI. Every yep. time we talk, I re-listen to it, I learn something new, and I enhance my productivity as a result. And it's fun. I mean, it's seriously, fun. it's fun. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right, Barrett. Okay. With that, everybody, please go to over50startingover.com to sign up for our email list. We'll drop this in your email box as it happens. Uh, go to YouTube, Apple Podcasts, leave us a five Apple review, and Spotify. Spotify, you catch uh, both the uh, audio and video. All right, everybody, uh, talk to you later, hopefully next week. Happy Father's Day, Alex.